At least all the audio seems to be working for a change. Um, Oh, son of a pup. <sighs> Hold on, I'm gonna fix something here. Twitch. <sighs> Log out. Stop that. Log in. Yay! Didn't two factor me, bro. What episode are, are we? Two fifty five. Um. Change our stream info <laughs> and I'm not feeling real confident you guys are going through to the stream nope Yeah, I am and you guys aren't. <sighs> That's dumb. Right? Um let me switch this. Okay. Huh. How do I sound to you guys? Yeah, now I can't hear you at all. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Okay. Now, uh, back to Discord. Peter's just derp derped. <laughs> well, it can hear me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I hear everybody, but I have an echo. Yeah, there's an echo. On all of us, I think. Whatever program you have for the the bumpers, I think just doesn't like Discord. <sighs> mm. 
No, it's not that. Because I can shut that off and it won't matter. Or, or Discord doesn't like... Discord doesn't like being routed through anything. Okay. Uh... Well, I'm I'm just figuring try to figure figure it out. Input output. Yeah, so it's supposed to be a cup of orange juice, but would would you like a uh, a bucket? Of orange juice. <laughs> well, that's why I thought it was a another popcorn turned, bucket. Also, your out... sweater is adorable. Thank you. <laughs> but it turned out way bigger than I thought it was going to be. I'm very confused. Yeah. It's like, I'm using the... I think I'm using the yarn size it's recommending. But, uh... Diamond Club <laughs> hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Fine. You know, it's just the biggest screwdriver anyone's ever seen. It's going to smile <laughs> at you. <laughs> Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this uh, program. <laughs> one of the fantasy books I read, like, forever ago. It was about, like, time travel and wibbly wobbly stuff. Yeah. But it takes place in the 1960s, and it's fo focused around a girl who runs away to the summer of love. And the first thing that happens to her is she's adopted by some creepy hippies who immediately give her a big old thing of orange juice with a smile. She's like, no, no, not that they smiled at me. The cup had a smile of its own. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's all I can think of now is her with her, her baby's first trip. <laughs> thing. Poor thing. It's like, I know it's fiction, but it's like, there's enough references, I'm like, I'm pretty sure something like that happened to some poor 14-year-old girl who just ran away. Like, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's fun. All right, we're back to we go to the stream and you guys hear me and there's no echo, just you guys can't hear the bumpers, but the stream can. So okay. we're back to that bullshit. Uh, I'm gonna just, just point it, point at me when the the intro song is done. Yeah, yeah. The main thing. I'm gonna promote our stuff in places. Go back to our call so where faces show. Yay, faces. Yay. Let's uh, move our curtain so that our names can be seen. There we go. Smiling faces. Smiling faces. Dally faces. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, and we can definitely be heard in the stream. Double checked. And ready? Ready. All right, Please. I'll push, push the button. We got perspective, we got the cool. We got the muscle and you know we have and rule. We are the key grills, we are the key grills. All right. We got the know-how, we got control. We got the knowledge and we tell you how it rolls. We are the Geek Grills. We are the Geek Grills. All right. 
We are the Geek Grills. We are the Geek Grills. Tonight! <laughs> Hell yeah. Hello, and welcome to episode 255 of Geek Grills. The Geek Grills podcast supported primarily by our patrons. You can find us at patreon.com slash grills. I'm Linda, and I'm joined by my co-host, Ember. Hello, hello. And Ray. Hello. So today's topic uh, is kind of a random one, but it sounded interesting. We're going to be talking about handwriting analysis, like history, kind of what it's used for, if it's used nowadays at all, what you can tell from it, and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but first, before we get into that, what have y'all been up to? Ember? Uh, stuff and things. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, I had... A Juneteenth meeting, being sick for so long, I missed a whole bunch of them, um, but that was very productive, um, and a lot at once, because uh, they are, it was the first time they were splitting all into committees with their jobs, and I'm not really on a committee. We got our timelines of every task that needs to be done by certain deadlines for each committee, but my job is to coordinate the volunteers and come up with their instructions, their training, their packets, what they're going to do, their tasks. And all but one committee has a volunteer aspect. <laughs> so I have to work with every single committee and collate what they their needs are. And um, yeah, so that's a lot. I'm going to be making <sighs> spreadsheets and... <laughs> The herding cats job. Good luck. Yes. <laughs> Fortunately, the recruiting volunteers is not my job. Um, but I have uh, I have a lot of experience, actually, and that was evident last year. Like, because they had a bunch of volunteers and everybody's running around with chicken, like chickens with the heads cut off. And I was able to, like, wait. Okay. You two do, go do this. You come with me. You go do this. And, like, kind of pick up all the little pieces and... Um, the current chair and other people kind of noticed that and wanted my help. So it, it's, it's a lot. Um, but I, I feel good about being able to use like the right set of skills <laughs> to help make this better for everyone. Uh, also got back to hosting karaoke, which was really good. It was a good night. Um, we had a little drama last time we hosted where a friend of ours sang a very dirty song and some people got offended. And so, yeah, <laughs> this time during setup, apparently the owners came to my husband like, no crazy stuff, right? It's like, all right, stop. We already had this discussion. <laughs> like, Please stop. <laughs> but it made it very tense for us the whole night. Like, y'all are singing fancy. Pay attention to what that's about because it offends me like they're okay they're not okay with the ballad of chasey lane and i get it if they don't understand the context but then they want to they want to sing crazy bitch and that's fine yeah. so we think we have it worked out we'll see in a couple of weeks uh <laughs> <laughs> i was about to say like what's the dirtiest thing i've ever sang at karaoke i like big butts that's about it <laughs> I didn't sing this at karaoke, but I did make one of our friends during a, a LARP event almost, like, need her inhaler because I sang Get Down With The Sickness on the way to a field, on the way to a field battle, like, in a jazz style. I thought Get she was going to die. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is it, Robert Cheese? or? Yeah, yeah. it's not really yeah. dirty, it's just explicit. <laughs> just a yep. lot of curse words. Yeah. <laughs> um. So there was that. What else? Um, gee, my uh, other monitor quit showing my notes. That's fun. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you need those. So I don't know. What What have you been up to? <laughs> Let's get the rest of uh, I was about to say there was a chili cook-off and reading Pumpkin Queen because I can still see notes. Okay, yeah. yeah I'm reading the... I, I did get started reading uh, Long Live the Pumpkin Queen, which is our book club episode for next in next month. And mm -hmm. I, there, I'm considering entering a chili cook-off. Okay. I've never wow. entered one before. There's a local one 
and I, I might, I might do that. It do the thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a little, you know, scary, but. <laughs> um, so, so was starting doing market days, but those turned out real good for me. So you should do the chili cook-off. Yeah. I encourage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mine could be long, cause gods. Okay, don't. So, I guess. Cause I what? I could try to stream. I could streamline it. Yeah. She, okay. She's, she's got her whole like the gods event, the one shot that we've been talking about that I ended up missing because I had COVID. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> maybe we should I... just do separate shows with you guys <laughs> every month <laughs> instead of a quick I'm catch up. Think. <laughs> I could try and streamline it as quick as possible. Like, I literally, well, I, I had started writing on a different document for so I didn't forget what happened. <laughs> so I just link to it. <laughs> How about this? You do the, the truncated version. Okay. And then we'll record you by yourself and have that be Patreon content. <laughs> so like, the long version. Right? Anybody who wants to know all about the LARPing aspect of your lives. <laughs> Is a whole different what I did this week. <laughs> Very fair. Okay. Um, I I will say it was a one shot. It was vaguely based on the French Revolution around um, basically That's... a race. I'm gonna do it real fast. Clockworking, which are basically mechanical people that were developed by inventors, and it's been centuries and centuries, and the inventors are dead, and nobody knows who. Nobody, nobody treats them as people anymore. They just treat them as objects to get things done. Therefore, they've grown resentful that nobody treats them as people. And there's a revolution. And there was an actual... Um, a fake guillotine. There was a guillotine. fake guillotine. There was a fake guillotine. I there saw a... it. Yes. I didn't see it in action because I wasn't there. There are many videos I... in the group. I <laughs> did see the pictures. Uh, so Friday basically started as everybody meeting together at the Wind Down Cafe. Uh, and, and like, do you know why you're all here? Well, I hope you're all here because of the revolution, because now there are people who are going to come and kill us. And there was some snotty marquee that I hated, uh, who came <laughs> in to negotiate after we defeated the, the bad guys who were coming to get us, the Swirl Coats, because this other group of people just randomly showed up through a portal, who knows, called the Republic. Uh, there we go. Saturday. See, that was the fastest Friday I've ever done. <laughs> Uh, Saturday there was supposed to be a hanging uh, that was stopped they were going to hang one of the people of the Clockwork Revolution that was stopped uh, and uh, somebody switched sides an artist showed up and started bossing everybody around for his inspiration and Tarthoon and um, uh, uh, showed up with uh, I can't think of his name with a flamethrower and basically roasted the artist guy alive uh, <laughs> Until he wasn't alive anymore. So he was crazy even back. Okay. Yeah. It's no. Fine. No. No. Oh, but we gotta see him get his super upgrades too. That's so all, that was that's, fine. That's all weird plot stuff in the future past and oh god. Anyway. Yep. <laughs> nope. That was fine. So some people are upset that they were that the revolution could take such a violent turn, uh, and the rest of us were like, well, what have they been doing to us? So. <laughs> Uh, the blah blah. Uh, Marquis came back and attacked us, uh, so we got revenge. I really tried to do, since I had performance, a musical performance of Look What You Made Me Do, but I couldn't do it. All I could do was scream, Look What You Made Me Do at Tevin. And I felt very <laughs> bad. Tevin was playing the Marquis jerk face. And there was a time skip of, so people could reschedule their characters of like a few years. So it wasn't just like, we all met up for a revolution and we all did it. Wah. It was more like pacing. Uh, there was a event where we had to break into a salon, uh, get information, and half of us had to stand there and take the verbal abuse. Uh, well, not directed at us, but directed at another plot member. Um, we, we had, we had, let me, maybe be clear. We had workshops before this. Oh yeah, we all knew over. what we were getting into, what we were signing yeah. up for. Uh, yeah. And like I said, it was directed at another plot member who was basically being a standing for the PCs in terms of like tanking that. But the two of us had stayed in that room because if we all left, it would have been suspicious about what we were doing. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're upset, so I stole all their snacks. 
or I stole enough of their snacks that I felt like I was making a difference, but not enough that the guy who was working the snack table would have any repercussions upon him for misplacing snacks. Uh, that, uh, that just reminds me of spite mints. Uh, oh yeah, like, like I was super spiteful. Uh, this <laughs> is important because I, they're, they're York peppermint patties, basically. <laughs> Uh, and there was the Aviatrix, which is like the snooty lady who's supposed to be running the, the airship that we all live on and hasn't done anything in like over 100 years. So she has a chicken walker, I think was the actual name of the freaking thing. Uh, <laughs> and she is coming to stop the, the revolution. So the other clockwork can sabotage it, cut to field battle where it's an endurance fight because her clock, her chicken walker is going to die. It's Mary in the fanciest freaking wig like that you've ever seen with like this big Nerf gun to mow us all down, uh, just yelling at us. So eventually we get her down, we kill everybody else, and I throw a York peppermint patty back at her and tell her that her snacks are terrible, in addition <laughs> to everything else. That was my pettiness. Uh, and then she is taken host she's taken hostage. Uh, Lady Emerald gets her wig, uh, and wears it for the rest of the event. Uh, there's something about a stitch school investigation, and then the next day, Sunday, starts with guillotines. And then the whole, like, hey, we thought we needed only one person to fly this plane that we got from the aviatrix. Nope, we need three people to be sacrifices, so the airship goes through the portal, and not everybody dies. So, I, I joined Suicide Squad. And it was really cool. Uh, Catherine was put in the helicopter simulator, so she could actually pilot. And mm -hmm. me and Echo had to do puzzles, which was like a pipe game and making shapes out of magnets and trying to comprehend French. Uh, <laughs> and that was it. Uh, we did our mission successfully. People made it through the portal. The, all the some clockworking survived. Therefore, the race continued on. And that was it. That was God's. <laughs> that was the one day. It was super fun. There, there was a, the one shot, not a one day. The the one shot. Yes, over the course of three days. Okay, so, um, <laughs> this week, Ray played a LARP and <laughs> uh, watched that 90s show. Actually, not that bad. The Last of Us, really freaking good. Do recommend. Uh, part of the menu, which I did see was very good. I was just very exhausted and fell asleep. Uh, made my ATE character uh, based off the Iron Chef and right up the cult. I ended up being two pages, which isn't bad at all. Uh, <laughs> Godmother got into an accident heading to Florida. Oh, no. If you have RSV, maybe... Maybe if you or COVID or anything like that, and you're sleepy, and you've been fighting it for a while, maybe give yourself some extra time before you make yourself do an eight-hour drive by yourself. I'm just, Oy. she's okay. She got bruises. She didn't hit anybody, but it was apparently like over a bridge in Florida, and the car met the bridge. Oh my gosh. Yeah. PSA. So, <laughs> so be careful. Uh, thank you to everybody who stopped and helped her, because, but uh. That was uh, uh, between everything else going on with mother figures in my life right now. I'm not having a great time. Uh, and then uh, worked at a Trinity Pitcher for Roll20. And finally, we played Dead by Daylight on Saturday, and it was awesome. <laughs> yes. Done. <laughs> you know, Roll20. What? Uh, oh, uh, Roll. I think it was Roll20. It, it's basically a way to play. Um, your tabletop games online. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she, yeah. She just made a. a I don't picture. think I've ever put pictures there. <laughs> yeah, you can make your little icon, nice. so so it's your little person. Yeah, I haven't used it in a while, so. Mm -hmm. We are switching to it for our Trinity game, so. We've done some updates. Yeah, yeah. it's more than just D and D, folks. There's a lot yeah. more out there than just D and D. <laughs> Linda, what's on your shirt? It's a fox. With a little tail. Oh, okay. It's, That's why it, I want to steal it. <laughs> it uses the negative space. Yes. Yep. Very mm -hmm. cute. Very so what's nice. you, you've been up to? Well, it, I I got the, the COVIDs, um, uh, so I had to miss a week of bump, bump. <laughs> regular podcasting. I, I got better. I, I got better. Um, but yeah, I, the, the exhaustion is no joke. Can confirm. I lost about three days just because mm. I was sleeping. Um, but in the interim, 
of the couple weeks that, you know, it was game night and then also I missed a week. Um, I did, uh, I signed up for MumbleCon, so I've got my artist table, uh, at, in Artist Alley. Uh, after we record, I'm going to sign up for a monthly vendors, um, at the Smyrna Market, because that's, today you can start signing up for that. And it's gone from just having a full season and half season, and like daily, to full season, half season, monthly vendor, and a, a fur uh, market. So that's good. Uh, it'll only be six events once per month. Um, so that'll make it so that I have time to make the th make the things. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I've been doing more sewing. I finished, this was the costume I was going to wear to, uh, to the Clockwork and Revolution. Beautiful. Um, I will use pieces of it at ATE because there's, you know, it's it's three different pieces. So mm -hmm. I can definitely use the shirt and the underskirt. I'm not sure about the overskirt yet. It's a little too... Mm, a little too frou-frou. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm also working on the pale toe, the jacket that I need for the winter event that I'm coming in on because it's going to be very cold up in the Mount Tennessee Mountains. I almost have the um, mock-up done. Uh, it's very Christmassy. I used a bunch of old Christmas fabric that I had. Um, <laughs> but I, I have actually bought the actual fabric for the coat. It's going to look really dark on camera. But it's a very dark blue. This is the out, outer layer. It's a suede. And then the inner layer is this beautiful brocade. Oh wow. oh, wow. Wow. It's like a very <sighs> lovely floral silver brocade. Yes. Silver blue. I'm very excited. I'm it's very slippery. I'm also terrified because it's going to be a gigantic pain in the ass to sew. Oh yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Especially with the suede as the others. Oh. Yeesh. 8000 pins. Here I come. <laughs> <laughs> um I got a new adorable crochet book. So the the one that was the um, rainbow crochet book, the creator of that made another book. So I had to get it. It's all like garden stuff. Oh. It's all plants and little buggies and like garden tools. So I'm very excited about that because it's adorable. <laughs> I just have my, I have a stack of books that I'm just going to work my way through to make for things to take to market and to MongoCon. So... We've got this one, the garden book, the the uh, Pokemon crochet book, the <laughs> the slippers, the slippers, the uh, iconic women, uh, maybe the that's a lot of books. I don't know if I'm gonna get to the last one, but it's fine. <laughs> I think I might need slippers with sunflowers on them for my girlfriend. Oh, I can do that. Um, and then I have a plethora of crocheted things that I finished in the interim that I have wasn't I don't remember if I've shown what I've shown so I've got my popcorn bucket and soda oh my yeah. gosh <laughs> <laughs> and the, some, of, some of the popcorns come off and they have like little um, uh, what is that called like velcro? velcro you can just stick yes. them ah popcorn. Not all of them come off, but like six pieces come off. Oh wow! So play with them. Super cute. Love they have that. a little smiley face on the outside. Yes. And when I was making it, one of my friends was like, "Are you gonna put smiley faces on all the popcorn pieces?" And I was like, "That's too. That's six. That's twenty-one tiny faces looking at you." And I'm like, "That's too many." <laughs> Big little smiles. Um, I made an apple. Aww. I made an orange. These all have cute little faces. They all have cute little smiley faces. I made a creamsicle. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a mallet. It looks like a mallet, yes. <laughs> like a cricket bat, like yeah. a very tiny one. I made a carrot cake. Oh. And then I'm almost done with this one. I just have to sew the orange slice on. But I've made the biggest cup of orange juice. And you've seen Jaman because it turned out <laughs> way bigger than I expected it. It's supersized. It's this. You get all the citrus you need. Vitamin 
D. No, but I. <laughs> D. C. Vitamin C. D. C. You get the you get vitamin D if you have it outside. It yes. C and D. <laughs> um, if it's a mimosa and you just need all that room. Yes. <laughs> I I said I, I made the world's biggest screwdriver. Um, <laughs> so. That is all of the crafting I have been doing. It's a lot of crafting, but it's been like what two weeks, three weeks. So it's a, it's okay. Um, I left my sewing machine on. That's fine. Um, so, <laughs> these things happen. These things happen. Uh, so now that we're all caught up, um, we can get into the discussion topic, which is handwriting analysis. So, uh, yes, I have that open. Good. Um, handwriting analysis is uh, known as graphology. Um, so it basically is when you see, I guess in shows, sometimes they'll have like a handwriting analyst like comparing um, uh, like samples. That's part of it. But it's also attempting to tell someone's personality or traits by the way that they write. And that's kind of more on the pseudoscience end of things. Yeah. Because you, you've got like a <laughs> wide range. <laughs> yeah. Because, and like... I, was, I was reading that they it, it's confused because like handwriting analysis where it's supposed to say what your personality is or whatever, or if you're psychotic, is graphology. Yeah. But... Um, Graph analysis is used by forensic scientists to like that's comparing one to another, trying to determine if it's like the same person that wrote something, and that's actually for you know forensic documents. <laughs> right. So you you've got this like dichotomy of pseudoscience versus like uh, well used and like documented science. It, and it's real good for like a show, right? Where yeah, yeah. it's like, oh, but you know, we do that. We have this criminal profiler, and they think that this and this and like, th that's a great hook. That's not how this actually works. It's, it's just a really just... good story device. <laughs> yeah, it's not. They wouldn't be able. So the telling how telling telling someone's thoughts by their writing style is um, fantasy. And <laughs> telling if somebody wrote a ransom note by comparing actual writing is what they actually would use for right. it in yeah. real life. So like, it doesn't like... actually determine like you, you can't tell someone's whole personality by it. But it is the interesting. The eyes or the yes. broken T's indicate a, a skewed personality. No, that's crap. Yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting to because it is. culturally. Like especially if if you grow up with cursive and 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 the the way you form your letters feeling more like trying to put across something different, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like I I feel like I changed my handwriting when I was a young girl, like it, yeah. trying to make it cute and trying to make it you know like well, more I rounded just... because I believed. A, the impression people would get would change. I distinctly remember, I think it was somewhere in middle or high school, I started writing my number ones differently. I wrote, instead of just a straight line, I actually put on the little tick mark and the, the dash at the bottom. Um, and that's how I write my ones now. But I remember making the conscious decision of I would I want to write my ones differently. I don't remember why. Um, I started doing it with... Um, there was, a uh, like, sevens in other, like, I think it was when I was taking French, like, in, in high school or something, mm -hmm. and they, they always put a line through the middle. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you would need to differentiate seven that way, I guess, because it really just makes it look, like, more like a four, but that's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> um, but then my uncle, his, I went to live with him for a little while, and his handwriting, he made Fs that way. Where it's mm -hmm. just kind of like a, the top, like a seven with a dead across yeah. through it. And a cursive F is a really weird pain in the ass extra strokes. So I just kind of <laughs> like, I could use this. It is totally a recognizable F that's like a cross between 
printing in cursive, and I just started my. I still make my Fs that way. I, according to my mom, I completely changed my handwriting in elementary, like early elementary school, because some girl ma like didn't like it or said something to me about it. I don't remember this, but she's like, <laughs> you used to have such lovely handwriting, and now your handwriting is crap. And I'm like, well, thanks, mom. She's like. She's like, and it's all because of that one girl. <laughs> oh, jeez. <Okay. laughs> Mine's gotten bad, but I think it's just age. And, like, it's become more and more, like, just scribbling a note. Then I only write carefully when it's a greeting card or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, then, and then you get into stuff like the differences between print and cursive. And even, like, onto the more intricate stuff like calligraphy. Like, okay, I know cursive. I can read cursive, but I promise you, I can't read everybody's freaking cursive. <laughs> just, yeah, just accept but, this, people, and as, stop using the fax machine with cursive writing. As somebody, Send an email. as some, as somebody who has to read uh, requisitions where doctors <laughs> have written words, I some of them are fine, and some of them I'm like, Heck. I think. Uh, I'm gonna go with kerat uh, keratosis and uh, hope that that's correct. <laughs> we had an entire class. It was uh, it was medical transcripting, and it yeah. was trying to suss out and determine what the heck these notes from actual doctors are, because the handwriting is just so like it's just scribbled so fast, and you're like, what is this? I well, that's the thing. Cursive is quicker to write. Yeah, um, that's how it's designed. It, it all but runs together. if you don't use the standardized form, I remember there was one yeah. word that was just a, a series of like squiggles, and nobody in our office could figure it out. <laughs> we were like, "What is this supposed to be?" <laughs> yeah, no. If you're not going to use the standardized form <laughs> that, that you can even reasonably expect a bunch of people would know, then then just print. Yeah. Yep. Type it. <laughs> so I found this blog post. Getting back to the the, the graph. The handwriting. Topology. It's uh twelve characteristics of handwriting. So this is basically what the experts use. I'm trying to figure out if the hold on. Add it. Yeah. So this is what the experts use who are doing the compare thing. So the actual like science. Trying to comparing. determine if the same person wrote one thing and then another thing. Yeah. And then we can hop over to trying to figure out personality types, which is the pseudoscience <laughs> side of it. So when they're trying to figure out, you know, if it's uh, like a letter written by the same person, they look for line quality which is like the flow if they're like nice and even or if they're shaky, um, word and letter spacing, um, size consistency, pen lips, which, you know, if you're... Take a break. Yeah, if, if you're not... That's not it's yeah, a lot of this seems really designed to like about. figure out if they were forging or copying. Yeah. yeah connecting strokes, um, uh, complete letters or... Uh, cursive versus print, or both, pressure, or both, <laughs> slant, baseline habits, which baseline habits is basically are you writing above the line or below the line if it's like line paper, um, flourishes and embellishments, which is different for regular letters than it is for like a signature. So uh, signatures are like the easiest thing, I think, for them to figure out if it's forged or not. Um, especially because they can like, like my signature, for example, I, I write the cursive and then I actually don't dot the I until the very end. I, I carry the A line all the way back and just do a, a, a circle. Fancy. Um, and it, it's I, interesting because <laughs> like, there's a dichotomy there between the, the reason to put a flourish in your signature initially is to keep it from being easily like copied because somebody will, you know, 
it's the way you do it, not the way anyone else actually would just write your name in cursive. However, <laughs> when somebody's trying to identify a signature, they are looking for those specific things. So it kind of, yeah. And then a, a theocratic placement, which is like dotting I's and uh, crossing T's, that kind of thing. Um, which it, it's another thing that you don't usually think about. You don't think about, oh, I crossed my T really high or I crossed my T right in the middle. And then you have like the, the middle school thing where you put a heart for your, you know, dot, I dot. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny because there's something like this with typing now. Like if you learn to type on a typewriter, you usually will do the two spaces after period. Mm -hmm. But if you just learn on the computer, there was no need to do that. Right. You only had to do it because you learned on a typewriter. Which is so. really, really funny, actually, because when I started writing, like, my mom, you know, got me the word program, and I was, it was doing a bunch of writing. Mm -hmm. She was like, now don't forget to put a double space. And I was like, why do I need to put a double space? Because she had learned on yeah. a typewriter. And then when she was teaching me, she taught me the way, but I didn't actually need to do it. That way. Yeah. So it's very interesting. Yeah, the I, same I, with the comma, a... the Oxford comma argument. Yeah. Like, so I do I, it that way. That's the way I was taught to type. Yeah, I, I had we had an actual typing class where we had typewriters, not computers. So it was weird. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, apparently, like because of that, it helped them uh, when they were doing the crackdown on the Silk Road. It helped them narrow down like the age range of what they were looking for. As, which hmm. I found very interesting, considering I'm younger, but but do that same thing. So I was like, huh, is that really? But anyway, sorry. Anyway, yeah, that doesn't <laughs> seem I that doesn't seem very reliable though, because I mean, if they were, I don't know, if they used any yeah. autocorrect, it would uh, switch that up. So yeah. So basically. It's interesting to me that kind of the first in, like inkling that this was a, a uh, not even a science, but like the beginnings of this was like the 1500s. It was like 1575. They were already talking about handwriting analysis. There hmm. was like a book that was published about it. Um, <clears throat> but it, it got very... Um, people became more interested in it in the 1800s because that was also the era of, um, what is it called, when you, chronology, when you're uh, trying to figure out the, the bumps in your head. <laughs> by the yeah. bumps on your head. Yep. Yeah, so like, they had all of these theories about how to figure out someone's personality by their physicality. Uh, we could currently correlate that with some of the throwing off the shackles of slavery and racism. Yeah, there was, a lot, and... there, there, was a, there was a lot of racism. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's of, a racism. lot of racism. That was actually one of the reasons phonology, and they're like, oh, well, this brow indicates that you're a criminal kind of crap. Like, very, very, ugh. very upsetting. Not just bad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, they were trying their best, but they went in with a bias. Like, a really, really, really big bias. And yeah. it just threw everything off. But it was that same kind of thought process of, you know, well, we can figure out what kind of person it is by how they write. Never mind the fact that a bunch of people were illiterate. They might be... So there was this thing called being sign literate, where you could, you, you could write. So not a lot of, not as many people were sign literate as they were able to read. They could read, but they couldn't write. Um, so that's it. That's also something that throws a spanner in the works. <laughs> you um, know, I, I've discovered that firsthand trying to learn another language. Yeah. Well, it's very classist, definitely. I mean, yeah. You you need to even if you need to learn a certain number of reading, uh, a certain amount of reading to. Be able to read instructions to do your job and recognize signage and um, that sort of thing. The the luxury to take the time to practice writing is another thing entirely. And it's a fine motor skill. 
So, like, you're looking at early education, it, like, it, it's really, really hard to learn to write when you're older. Mm -hmm. Physically and write. It's, <laughs> and it's, it's a little bit of a weird thing for, like, people to think about kind of now. <coughs> like, because when you're in school, you know, our public school system, you learn to read and write at the same time. But that's not always been the case. So it's it's just And it's not as like far in the past as you think though either. Um no, living 18, in North Carolina and rural North Carolina where I have gotten to meet some folks from like a couple generations, just two generations older than me, like I, you know, people in their 70s um mm -hmm. who are can speak very very well and they read and they do like all their own they run their own businesses they do their own taxes and everything else but to write something the 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 grammar and the spelling and the actual writing goes awry um mm -hmm. and i've had to you know deal with that in you know public forum like having to correct their work so you know they don't get embarrassed or you know very I, I wanted to share something somebody sent me a beautiful letter of thanking me for stuff I did and I couldn't like sh I didn't want to share it with anyone because I didn't want to embarrass them and they're perfectly in incredibly intelligent but just it doesn't come across in the writing and that's one of those like it's along the same vein where I, I quit I try not to grammar correct and, and be, you know, the grammar police online either because it was pointed out to me that that's, it is a classist thing. You may have just never come across it. Even my mom, like she reads and she always read a lot um, and listened to like a lot of NPR and that kind of thing. But then she would use she would mispronounce words a lot mm -hmm. and it was because she had only ever read it right yeah bagel yeah, yeah bagel <laughs> the bagel 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 that's yeah, a, that's a little more colloquialism oh, but... <laughs> oh yeah yeah no but it, it was an ongoing I mean, joke from community that there's, I... there's yeah. a few of those that you know that i've done because when i was younger i i read a lot like I would do, you know, I, I was the quiet kid in the corner that wanted to read. Um, so when I would start trying to use the words that I, re I read, I didn't always get them correct. <laughs> so it's just oh, it's a thing yeah. that happens. And then sometimes it's just what you're exposed to and what you're not, even in school. Like mm -hmm. I have friends your age, uh, one I can think of in particular, who she purposely would look, she was whenever she came across a word in a book she didn't know she would like go to the dictionary and look for the phonetics so that she wouldn't do that because mm -hmm. doing it a few times mortified her <laughs> oh man i would just like do it to the best of my ability or if i was reading like something with like russian names in it i would like just kind of like switch it a little just to make it easier on my brain <laughs> <laughs> You go to a fancy restaurant, though, and then it's like, uh, I've seen that just, word. I think I know how to point. say it. Yeah. When the waiter asks you, you're just like, oh, yes, this one. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, I, I will... Universal just, power pointing. Yeah, I will generally attempt, but I will, like, apologize to the server before. I'm like, I'm going to butcher this. I apologize. <laughs> and then try and go for it. <laughs> that was... But, yeah, tangent. being judged by your handwriting <laughs> yeah. is also, they used to, like, try to judge your job performance by how you wrote, and that's... Yeah. But it so... took it to, like, the late 80s for them to go, oh, that's actually not accurate. Right. Well, yeah, 87. Is they, <laughs> you know, the graphologists weren't unable to predict scores on the Icenic personality questionnaire using writing examples. And I'm like, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> So, yeah, I think we like... still have a ways to go, though. Like, they're literally, they're comparing it to fucking personality tests and Myers-Briggs to determine yes. if that's fake. Yep. Um, uh. that's problematic. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
But of so course, there are also do... corporations using personality tests to even interview. Still, oh, we should do a show about that. Oh, the we stupid test that, that they make you fill out as you're doing your application. CBS. How, how would you handle? How would you feel about this? How would you handle this? How would you? And I'm like, just I. And half the time you're like, well, I'm just going to tell you what I know you want to know and not how yeah. I actually feel because yeah. I want the interview so I can get the job. <laughs> oh, there's there's a whole... Oof. I'll, I'll, <laughs> you guys got to watch the documentary about that. It's terrifying. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, so it does look like this came into like super prominence just bef like eight, late 1800s. Right. In, in, kind in, of... in kind of the... The, when they were throwing science at the wall and seeing what actually worked. <laughs> but what also <laughs> happened in the late 1800s was Jack the Ripper, H.H. Yeah. Holmes, and like writing yeah. into the newspaper. There's a whole of... bunch. There's a whole bunch of serial Creaky. killers in the 1800s. <laughs> yep. Yep. And I was it, like, oh, it, that's interesting. <laughs> that was that was one of their like preoccupations was trying to figure out if there was a physical way to identify a criminal. Because they were like, there are too many criminals. Is there a way that we can look right into their eyeballs and be like, you're definitely going to commit a crime? <laughs> nope. <laughs> they tried. They tried real hard. <laughs> <laughs> yep. like, wouldn't that be nice? Now we're trying to do that with genetics, right? And uh, yeah, stop. <laughs> stop. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, there's like... <laughs> Doing it to prevent, like, or or a, a genetic, physical thing that, that will impact your life in a negative way is one thing. Doing it because you want blue eyes is something. I don't think we're there yet, but that's just kind of always been, like, a little... <laughs> I just dial a baby. I do think it's funny that the, basically, the British Psychology Society has given graphology... A rank of zero validity right next to astrology. <laughs> Look, my astrology is, is as it, it's as useful as me knowing that I have a bad time dating Michaels. <laughs> yeah, now to my male exes with the name Michael. It's like it's about as useful as being like, oh, hmm. and they were also Aries. Okay. <laughs> it's like you know you can all put a certain amount of stock in things like this if you want to. If if if. <laughs> Looking at that handwriting makes you feel a certain way, fine. If your horoscope yeah. seems to be oh. calling to you and it feels like a self-help then go ahead. If <laughs> it is at all subjective in interpretation, not science. Oh, there, yeah. There's where the line is. Yeah. <laughs> science? Pseudoscience. Need a smart ass. Yeah. <laughs> Put that with your tarot cards, you know? It's for fun right? Days, not, for, yeah. not for plotting out your life. No, it's a, it's a, it, to me, like, it's a useful therapeutic tool. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, relating and em empathizing with the person I am reading, usually it's somebody I know anyway, and gain some insight, use symbology to make you more comfortable in facing whatever the hell you're afraid of right then. Like, yeah. <laughs> now, all that being said, <laughs> there is a very interesting kind of story that I, um, it's not even a story, it's it's fact because you can actually see it. The, uh, and this is gonna, it's, it's a little bit of a jump off point, so go with me. Okay. So, um, they have the journal written by Samuel Paris, who is the guy that was in charge of the church during the Salem witch trials. They, mm. they still have his journal. There are some pages missing because he tried to cover his ass, <laughs> but you can actually you can actually when you're reading through his sermons and like his you can see his handwriting change as the panic picks up speed and goes on and then the aftermath before he gets kicked out well yeah even in forensic out. analysis like speed is one of the things that affects handwriting yeah Yep. But they, it, you, it goes to... it goes from pretty like easily legible to like cramped and um like curling in on itself kind of thing. It's very fascinating. Um I don't know if they've scanned all that in yet. I think they were they were going to at some point. Um like so so everybody could like see it on the internet. 
Um, but it just, there is, again, that's more towards the graph analysis mm -hmm. than, than, you know, trying to figure out what he was thinking, which would be graphology. <laughs> but, like, you can tell certain things from how handwriting changes over time. Um, whether that be, as you know, in my case, is it changing the, the way I write the number one, that could have just been a, a maturity thing. Um, or just watching as somebody who maybe feels super guilty and very pressured and watching as their handwriting just, you know, d declines. So there's a very, it, it's interesting. It's just part of it, there's two camps. One is scientific, and the other is not. <laughs> What's the camp that, like, shoves everything in the margin when you realize you've run out of space? Because <laughs> I'm totally guilty of that one. I was like, well, no, actually, no, I don't want to do is separate the word. I'm just going to read it real fast. <laughs> there was a quote in one of the articles uh, by some scientists saying that it is very seductive to look at it as a science, uh, as a science, even though it's not provably, because people that are well organized and calm and like present that way do tend to have very tidy handwriting, and so like that's one of those subjective things, and it's very seductive to seem like oh that makes sense, because of people who are like frantic and messy and like busy and. I mean, it might be a hundred different things that have you scribble in the margin because you don't have time to run and go get another piece of paper because something's going to burn on the stove. But if mm -hmm. somebody doesn't know that and they just see that and they think, oh, that person must be disorganized. No, that that's, but yeah, the tendency to think that way, like you think those people that are, those women that are all like, put together hair is perfect makeup every time and all their clothes are all matchy matchy and their socks the, the match best every Instagram. day are perfect <laughs> right and they have these wonderful you know organized tidy lives mm, no same like no <laughs> that that's not an actually reasonable assumption <laughs> also it's like we touched on before, it's kind of ableist to just assume everybody's going to have the same kind of handwriting and write the same way. And if they don't, well, obviously there's something wrong there. It's like, you don't know. Maybe they hurt their hand. Maybe they just don't have good coordination. Maybe, Maybe they have tendinitis. You don't know. Yeah. You don't know. Right? That's some compassion. <laughs> like sometimes I'm just having a bad hand day. That, that happens to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, anything we want to say in kind of conclusion? Just have fun, but don't <laughs> rely on it. Like, <laughs> I don't think anybody really would anymore, though. Like, ah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> okay, outside of a job situation, but I'm like, I don't think I've handwritten anything in so long. Like, I just usually type it up or like send a text or something like that. Like I like to send physical mail sometimes, <laughs> and I do get a little self-conscious sometimes because, <clears throat> excuse me, my handwriting has declined. But, I mean, like I said, I have bad hand days. My autoimmune stuff attacks my joints <laughs> some days. My thumbs don't work right. Um, so, you know, yeah, I, don't, I don't judge don't... people. <laughs> yeah. I usually only handwrite stuff for games, actually. And depending yeah, props. On, depending on the character I'm playing... I will actually change my handwriting around. Like for the jazz singer, I wrote everything in cursive. Um, for the my current god's character, I do uh, everything in calligraphy, which really makes my hand cramp up. I, I know. I lot. miss calligraphy. I used to love to do <laughs> calligraphy. And I, I have no idea what this new character is going to be. I, I probably just my regular kind of hand, you know, just. All you can think of for Ray's, Ray's type of characters, use crayon overhand. Uh, oh, yeah, Celeste. like Celeste. Celeste does have scribble, scribble handwriting. Uh, her spell book, I actually used a specific font to make it look magic-y, but that was about it. Otherwise, it's, it's just, yeah, my scribbles. <laughs> 
So I think maybe it's more important for people to remember that you can't really judge someone by their handwriting, but you can use it to give a certain impression. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if anybody has any thoughts upon such a thing, you can always email us at geekgirls at gmail.com. Um, you know, let us know what you think of it. Is it, you know, the worst pseudoscience you've ever heard of, or is it kind of <laughs> meh? <laughs> I've heard so, of worse uh, pseudoscience. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what are you most anticipating right now? Uh, I'm working. I'm working on harness training my cat again. I, I lost the harness, but <laughs> so I got another one, and she's. She, I put it on her yesterday. She's in her second day on it, and she's being a little less angry about it. Um, <laughs> and she's not angry. <laughs> First, she's trying to get it off, and I just had to adjust it so she couldn't, you know, uh, get her mouth on it. And, but she's not doing the, like, falling over when you look at her, pretending she can't walk yeah. or anything. She's Flop. just kind of, she's just kind of getting around the house. And my husband was, like, imagining, he's like, oh, poor kitty. I'm like, what? He's like, she's sitting in the bathroom, just sitting at me looking for Lauren. I'm like, oh, please. You know, because then she's up on the bed with me and she's just, like, being all cute. And uh, it's, she's so dramatic. Um, but I really want to do this. I'm like, just... Leave it. I want to do this. If she doesn't take to it, she doesn't take to it. But I was like, just think about how happy she will be being able to whore all the attention when I take her out places. So it's going to be fine. Uh, what else? I that, that's I don't have a lot going on. Just I think I'm going to go ahead and get out to Cedar Stump and enter the chili cook-off. I appreciate your encouragement <laughs> and um i picked up a gig pressing the button kind of doing the djing for a burlesque show in february so awesome that'll hey. be cool <laughs> sounds so cool what do yeah. you what about you ray all right so i got a punch in nazis adventure game set in 1939 that i'm super excited about we're finally gonna run Hopefully, as long as nobody still tests positive for COVID, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> which is the big thing that's been holding us back. So it's like, because we want to do it in person. So like, I have my little costume over here. I'm all ready. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hopefully we'll be, pun I'll tell us about punching Nazis and that'll be great. Uh, <laughs> then I need to complete my ATE kit and menu and then figure out the logistics of getting people fed because I'm sure they want food. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have a rough idea of the menu it's just the logistics like i'm not alone this time so i have somebody else who's doing like tanking kitchen and i think they're closer so i might ask them if they can bring perishables and i can bring more shelf stable stuff because yeah, yeah. four hours is a long time for me to fret about oh my god please let the it milk. stay cold in the box <laughs> the milk <laughs> Yeah, divide and conquer. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Linda? I'm actually already getting excited for ATE because I'm bringing in my new character as well. Um, if you want her in a set of three books, Floralography, which is a beautiful book about what it says, Essential Oils and Aromatherapy, also a book about what it says, and Dolly Parton in her own words. <laughs> nice. Nice. This is, this, these three books encompass my new character. So <laughs> my edible plants book covers me pretty well. Um, so I have to get my coat done. I want to practice some more with the auto harp because I pretty much it. I pretty much can play it. Um, it's just remembering where which buttons are what chord. Because you you there's two ways to play an auto harp. You can play it sitting on your lap. Um, but then you have to play on like the short strings or you can it, you basically play it hugging it because you, you're playing with your left hand on the buttons down and like then you're strumming with your right across this way so you're basically hugging the auto harp and I'm like I love you auto harp I love you so much let me make some music what button was that nope that's a B7 oops because you can't see you can't see the buttons because they have the chords written on them at least mine does. 
So I just have to practice some more. Um, I have to make sure I still know zombie. Yeah, I taught myself zombie uh, by the cranberries. I'm um, so excited. That's awesome. <laughs> it's it's only four chords. It's a four chord song. I should be able to remember it. Um, <laughs> but I I feel like I should go down into the basement and dig out more of my songbooks because they're down there in a box somewhere in that basement in that basement <laughs> that temple what was it the uh at the end of raiders of the lost ark you just have the warehouse that's your yeah. basement <laughs> it, it, basically it's the side it's the footprint of the it's the footprint of the house and it's full of stuff so there's that but i i can if i can go down there eventually but i don't want i i also want to make copies of the pieces that I want. I don't want to bring all of my um, music books because I have a lot of them. And I already, I have too much stuff for this character already. I think I might fill two tubs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to streamline. <laughs> Generally, when you start a character, you start with the basics and then get more as you play. Look, she's a townie. <laughs> She's a townie who likes her creature comforts. She's a fancy lady. I gotcha. Fancy lady, playing an indoor cat. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, that's it. Okay. Well, remember, folks, you can always come watch us record live at twitch.tv slash geekgrills on most Monday evenings. Next one will be on January 30th at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. It's comfort food season, so we're going to be talking about our favorite soups. <laughs> and in, Yes, all the recipes. Mm -hmm. In addition to the subs and bits that we get on Twitch, we are supported by our amazing patrons, the greatest girlfriends on the internet. You can become a patron at www.patreon.com slash grills. And don't forget, if you have Amazon Prime, you can sub to us for free every month on Twitch. Another way to show your support is by leaving us a review. You can do so on any of your podcast catchers. You can check out what topics we're going to do in the next month on our schedule below on our Twitch page. If you're a patron, you can always suggest a topic for us. We'll do it. So we'd love to hear your ideas. Also, I finished my bucket of orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> it's so big. <laughs> it's 48 ounces. It's the bingo. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where can we find you on the interwebs? I can be found at found at nine of twelve dot com. You can find me on Instagram under Dapple Dame. And you can find me on Instagram under the name Madcap underscore misc. That's M I S C. And you can check out my website at madcapm.com. Thanks for listening, everyone. Good game. GG. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> cool. Thanks. I put um, <laughs> the link to the documentary I mentioned in At our show notes. Yeah. Yep. It's uh, horrifying. <laughs> <laughs>